this morning. Um, great results for Labour in the capital of England, but um, not so much as you would have hoped perhaps around the rest of the country. What are you taking from last night's results so far? Well, we think this is a really strong turning point for Labour because you've got strong Labour results in Cumberland, to the very north of the country, but also in Southampton, the very south of the country, and rebuilding support from, obviously, what was a very difficult 2019 general election from us. We've seen a lot of that support being rebuilt. And, obviously, to have results like Barnet in, in North London, where, obviously, there have been a lot of changes that Labour needed to make. Um, so I think we're seeing this as a turning point and a very strong results in different parts of the country. But you do acknowledge that um, it wouldn't convert, as things stand right now, it would not convert to Labour being in control uh, in the House of Commons just across the road from here. Well, the 2019 general election was a, a very difficult one for us. That was our worst result across the country for generations. And we've been working right across the country to rebuild trust, to earn back trust. That's what we've been doing under Keir Starmer's leadership. And I think we're seeing the results of that. We're seeing uh, people I've been talking to on the doorstep who told us they were, they were voting Conservative at the 2019 election, but actually they have now decided to vote Labour in these local elections. So we've seen those kinds of things happening right across the country. It's certainly the case that the 2018 election, which is what a lot of these results have been compared to, was also we had already won more than half the, the seats that were up in the 2018 election. So obviously that means there's, there's, less, there's a limit to the improvements that you can make on then. But compared to the 2019 general election, this is a really big change for us and that's really important. Give us a heads up. What do you think is going to happen in Scotland? What are your um, pollsters uh, telling you? Well, we're still hopeful in, in Scotland, obviously, and we've been working. I think Anas is doing a brilliant job in Scotland, but I, I, I'm not in Scotland, obviously, at the moment here in Yorkshire, and I'm not going to count results before that they've actually been counted um, in the, the counts right across the country. OK, talk to me then instead about what's happening in Northern Ireland, because if Sinn Féin wins in Northern Ireland, it will not only be an historic victory for Sinn Féin, it will also mean that we could uh, very easily see uh, a border referendum. What's Labour's view on a border referendum? We've always taken very seriously the Good Friday Agreement and the need to sustain that and the need to work very carefully with all different parties across Northern Ireland and also to work with Ireland on this as well. So I think this is not an, an issue that you would expect me to make kind of rush statements on. Well, let's wait and see what the results are uh, and then I think we always have to be very careful and respectful about what's happening in Northern Ireland. Yeah, indeed so. But we could find ourselves in a position where this Prime Minister presides over the breaking up of the union. Do you think that is a possibility? I think that this is a Prime Minister who has been hugely careless about the union, whether that be about Northern Ireland, whether about be some of the issues that, that Northern Ireland has faced, whether that be about Scotland and some of the issues Scotland has faced. Um, and I think... Really, what we need from the Prime Minister is to have much more respect for the different parts of the country rather than to just be so careless about our history and our future and, and the strength that we have as a country together. Do you acknowledge, um, Ms Cooper, that we are finding ourselves potentially in a position where we could be seeing the breakup of the union? Because if, we, if that happens in uh, Northern Ireland, uh, uniting to have an island of Ireland, then, of course, we have heard from the SNP this morning, actually, and they're saying they're looking very, very closely indeed about what's happening across the Irish Sea. Well, as you'll know, we uh, continue to campaign in Scotland to be part of the union. Uh, you've seen the job that ANAS is doing, and is a great job, I think, in been rebuilding support for Scottish Labour and for the different things that they're campaigning for, for rebuilding trust in Labour. I think that's been really important. But it is as part of a united kingdom. We are stronger as part of a united kingdom. Uh, and that, I think, is something that we should value, for not just for economic reasons, but for historical reasons and for about the kind of future that we want for us as a country as well. OK, so what are you taking away? What's your takeaway from uh, what's happened overnight so far? 
So overnight, I think it's, it is a, a turning point for us. It, this is an opportunity for Labour to keep building. We know we've still got a lot of work to do. We are earning back people's trust. Labour has changed since the 2019 election, and we're seeing that in the results. So if you look, there are places right across the country, whether it be in some of those Cumberland areas that where we've won the council, like the constituencies like Copeland or like Workington or uh, other constituencies there, right through to Southampton, Itchen, but also other places across the country, Peterborough, Stevenage, places like uh, Wolverhampton, where we would be, on the basis of these kinds of results as a share of the vote, we would be winning back constituencies that we lost to the Conservatives in 2019. That's really important. That's what we're going to carry on working to do, carry on working to rebuild trust and carry on talking about the issues that people are most concerned about across the country, which is the cost of living crisis that is hitting families across the country. And I think the government's not doing anything about it, even even where we've set out practical alternatives that could change things. I think that's been a big factor in these local elections. Yeah, but, but I'm guessing that you must at least concede as well that given the reputation of this Prime Minister at the moment, the fact that he's going to be 99% likely to get more fines uh, from the Metropolitan Police very shortly, it looks as though uh, you know, he's misled a Parliament, certainly that's what the allegation is against him. You should have been doing better against someone like that who's in power in number 10 at the moment. Well, we've seen big improvements in the Labour share of the vote in many of these areas compared to 2019. That's what we've had to rebuild from. And I do think you're right that that does reflect the loss of trust in both Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak in their handling of the cost of living crisis, but also in the, the approach to the, the parties that we've seen at a time when they were breaking laws that they themselves had made and had called on people right across the country to make huge sacrifices in order to follow. So I do think those things have been reflected and that's why we've seen such a big change in the vote since 2019. But I guess it does also go back to the point I was making at the beginning as well, which is if you compare to the 2018 elections, we had already in those local elections, because of the nature of the areas that have been up for election, we had already won more than half the constituents, half the, the seats that were up. Compared to 2019, we've seen very significant progress, and that's why we see this as a really big, important turning point uh, and a reflection of all of the work that Keir Starmer and the Labour Party have been doing. OK. Um, it's good to talk to you, Yvette Cooper. Thank you for taking the time. Take care.